So a year and a half ago, we ripped apart a Wii's battery. I'm not sure how to say this word, but all of these cheap Chinese lithium iron phosphates have really funny names. This was the only battery that had low temperature charging protection for the price. Typically, you don't get that feature unless you spend more money. And not only does it have low temperature charging protection, but you can actually series connect up to 48 volts. But I did not get my hopes up with the initial testing because a lot of these cheap Chinese batteries, you just don't know what's gonna happen over the next couple of years. Well, guess what? It's been a year and a half and no one has complained about this thing. They actually work really well. And I even asked my viewers, I was like, hey guys, I haven't heard any complaints. For those of you guys that bought this thing, please let me know if you had any failures. And a lot of people are reporting that they had this in their system for over a year now without a single issue. Now, even though this is the only one with low temp charging protection under $350, the other cheap ones without low temp charging protection are also doing very well. Like Ampere Time, Chins, Redodo, like all those silly names that come out of China, all these cheap batteries are working incredibly well. And personally, I've had every single one on this channel and I've never been able to break one in any of my systems. I actually cycled the large 200 amp hour and 300 amp hour batteries for my Victor system every day for about a year and there was never any issues at all. Also in my backyard right now I have a gate opener motor and I'm using the cheapest battery on Amazon and it is working great. The control circuit failed before that battery did and this is in 120 degree weather in Las Vegas, Nevada. It also experiences freezing cold temperatures and it charges and discharges all day long and again not a single hiccup and that thing is dirt cheap. And it baffles my mind. I really thought that the these batteries would start dying, especially after one or two years, but they are just working. The BMS that they use and the cells that they're using just seem to work. And this is pretty crazy because why spend money on a 12 volt SOK battery, which costs like 500 something dollars, when you can buy a $350 battery that has the same features? Like there's really no benefit of buying those more expensive batteries. Now I do like the SOK because it's a metal case and they're using high quality cells that are matched. Even in our own testing, the cell voltage differential from cell to cell has been very minimal. And the failure rate is ridiculously low on all SOK batteries. It's, we're talking 10,000 batteries and you have like two or three bad ones, that's it. But this works just as well and it's much cheaper, which is crazy. I really thought these would not do so well. Now, one question I do have is, is this the same battery that we tore apart a year and a half ago? Both batteries I bought with my own money on Amazon. And sometimes with these cheaper brands, they'll swap out the cells, they'll swap out the BMS, and they won't tell anybody because these things are glued shut. So we're gonna cut this thing open. I just bought this off Amazon a couple days ago with my own money, and we're gonna see if it's any different. And cutting these can smell really bad. You do not wanna try this at home. There's lots of fumes. Oh, this is different. Yeah, this is totally different than before. These are totally different cells, different BMS, different bus bar configuration as well. Like this is a totally different battery than what we teared apart a year and a half ago. Is it good? I don't know. And on this battery, we only have two conductors. On the original one, there was five leading in and out of the BMS. And these cells look a little dirty. They could have done a better job in here, geez. I think the quality has gone down. Yeah, I like the first battery we ripped apart. This one does not look as good. The bus bars on the older one looked a lot better than this one. This looks like it was hacked together. Looks like they used a hacksaw to cut this and they just slapped it on there and welded it or something. But they seem to work. People do not have any issues with these batteries. No matter how bad they look, they seem to have a really good track record. And here's a temperature sensor. So let's get some cold water and see if it works. So now we're charging with 10 amps. Then we're gonna dunk this into some ice. Oh, look at that, it works. Let's heat it up and we're charging and let's stick it back in. So that's good. So let's charge it up and actually do a capacity test because if this does not pull full capacity, then it's a ripoff. 
we've got 73 amps going into this battery so we'll come back in like an hour when it's fully charged so after this was fully charged i put it on my cba4 for a capacity test and the results are 101 amp hours the old cells were 104 amp hours that's strange it did pass though it did have over 100 amp hours but yeah, these are not the same. And personally, I do not like that. It's hard for me to make recommendations when they change the internals without telling anybody. I have no idea what's going into these batteries. Maybe sometimes they have a bad batch of cells and they throw it in there and I, I don't know. And here's another crack. These cell holders are not very nice. But it did pass the test and we haven't had one not pass the test, so that's a good sign. But yeah, take it how you want. So it is pretty ugly. You don't know what you're gonna get. They might swap out one of the components and you have no idea, but people do seem to like these and they do seem to work really well. But I did go on my forum last night and see if anybody complained about these and there were a couple dead on arrival units. And when you have a dead on arrival unit from Wheeze, they do not respond. It is very hard to get their warranty fulfilled. I've emailed them like five times now and I have never got a single response from this company. It does work and a lot of people like it, but I want you guys to keep that in mind. Now, personally, I think the build quality of this now is pretty bad. I would rather buy a Chins over this or an Ampier time. I think the build quality on those is better than what's going on right here. Next, if you do want to spend more money on an SOK battery, if anything happens to that thing, they will swap it out for free. And there's a very low chance of anything going wrong because of the low failure rate. And when you buy an SOK battery, you're always going to get the same cells and you're always going to get the same BMS. Imagine trying to diagnose a support issue when you have different internal components. That makes things difficult. Now the price for one of these is $330 on Amazon. If you multiply that by four, that's $1,320. For $100 more, or a little over $100 more, you can get a server rack 12 volt battery with communication, state of charge indicator, better warranty, better cells. So like, I don't know why someone would actually buy these, but people do, they think that they're getting a fantastic deal, when in actuality, it's pretty expensive compared to the server rack if you consider the features and the build quality. And those batteries are designed to last for decades. I really don't know if this is going to last 20 years. It might actually. I mean, lithium iron phosphate cells, as long as this BMS doesn't give out, it would actually last a very long time. But yeah, I don't know. Now, something I think we should get away from is these 100 amp hour batteries, even for 12 volts. Just buy the 200 or 300 amp hour. To connect multiple small batteries in parallel costs a lot of money in copper. Cable is not cheap, so just buy the bigger batteries. I've noticed a lot of people buy 100 amp hour batteries and they'll buy like six or eight of them. And I just don't understand the logic. Now, this is still the cheapest one with low temp charging protection that works. We've tested lots of batteries, a lot of them that claim that they had low temp charging protection, but they did not. So this little temperature sensor is what differentiates this from all the others. Now, would I actually buy one of these? Probably not, but I know a lot of people will. They want the cheapest battery with the low temp charging protection. And if you have a very, very small system and you don't need 400 amp hours at 12 volt nominal, then sure, you could buy one of these, but man, I personally would avoid this. I do not like it when the internal components are inconsistent. I just have no idea what they're gonna be putting into my battery. We've seen that from a few companies in the past, so please watch my older videos if you wanna see that. But it did work, so it was good. I wouldn't buy it, but yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.